Hello, everyone. I do hope you enjoy the short story I've prepared for you today. Also, we are getting close to hitting the 10k subscriber milestone, so if you do enjoy this type of content and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and like the video. One last thing before we start. I just wanted to extend my appreciation to all the authors whose stories I am allowed to use. Do make sure to go support them. Their links can be found in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to the story. Enjoy. My parents had a toy skeleton named skelly Sun as a joke. It used to keep me up at night telling me something bad was going to happen. According to my mom, the way the story of skelly Sun's introduction to the family goes is quite mundane. My mom loves dressing up, decorating, and generally celebrating every holiday out there, while my dad is more of a holidays are just a day off work kind of guy. But when they got the first nicer apartment together, around Halloween, he bought her the toy as a joke because it was incredibly silly looking. Since they were being patient about starting a family, they used to pick on each other by occasionally saying things like, you forgot to feed Skelly Sun again today, didn't you? I can see his ribs. <laughs> you know, dumb parent jokes like that. I mean, I guess it's cute. Anyway, when I was born, no, they thankfully did not name me Skin Daughter. They put it in my room and used to tell me that Skelly Sun was my big brother and he was going to keep me safe from the ghouls and goblins of the world. We even had a bedtime song about... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Skelly Sun is mostly fabric and stuffing but with some rigid pieces underneath for the bones. He has an orange and black wide brim hat with matching striped vest and pants. He has black shoes and a bow tie of the same color. I can't express to you how silly this toy was. When I was very young, I used to revere Skelly Sun. I guess like I would an older brother. I never played with him directly. He was only ever involved in make-believe in the role of advisor or wise man to the other toys. It's not that my parents told me not to play with him or that he was fragile or anything. I just thought of him as different. I can still feel the way the hair rose on the back of my neck the first time I heard him speak to me. I was eight years old. It was late at night and I was up a little later than I should have been. My parents had told me to be in bed by nine, but they fell asleep before that, so I stayed up and watched some TV in my room. It took me a moment to realize the sound had come from my side and not from the speakers in front of me. Go wake your parents up or something bad will happen soon. I froze and looked to where the sound was coming from. The only thing on my dresser in that direction was Skelly Sun. Of course, I didn't assume it was him right away. Hello? I said out loud, clutching my covers tightly. I let go long enough to turn the volume down on the TV and saw Skellyson's mouth move this time. His voice was calm, deliberate and forceful. Go wake your parents up or something bad will happen soon. Being aid, I ran to my parents' room crying. They asked what was going on and I told them I had a nightmare. Even at that age, I knew what I had seen wasn't normal, and I was scared to say it out loud and make it real. I got it from my dad. He has always been one to keep his struggles to himself. I slept in my parents' bed that night. The next time it happened was two months later. Similarly to last time, I was staying up later than my parents, but unlike last time, I had a cousin spending the night. Simon and I were up late, maybe ten playing video games, after a long day at the beach. Simon went to the bathroom and while he was gone, Skelly Sun spoke to me again. Go wake your parents up or something bad will happen soon. This time I didn't freeze or cry. I knew Simon would be back in a minute, 
and I was more confused than scared this time. What's going to happen? I asked. Skelly-san turned his head towards me and only repeated himself verbatim. Go wake your parents up or something bad will happen soon. His head snapped back into place as I heard the door swing open and Simon re-entered. Who are you talking to? Simon asked me. Did you hear that? I asked him in surprise. If he had heard Skelly-san talk, Maybe I wasn't going crazy after all. I only heard you mumbling, but I didn't hear what you said. Were you yelling at the game? He hadn't seemed to have heard anything specific after all. Skelly son didn't move or speak for another six months. On my ninth birthday, me and all my friends were going to go to an amusement park. The day before, I was so excited I thought I was going to be sick. I was reading all about the rides, attractions, and food at the park in bed when skelly Sun spoke again. Go wake your parents up or something bad will happen now! He said the last word so sharply it shook the windows. I sat up half terrified and half in disbelief. I opened my mouth to speak but before I could take a breath he screamed, No! 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 The shockwave from his voice scattered the dust in my room and almost knocked me off my bed. I took off running. I burst through my mom and dad's door and screamed, I need help, before I blacked out. I woke up 38 days later in the hospital. They said the tumor was the size of a golf ball and growing. If they hadn't caught it when they did, it would have started putting pressure on my brain and I could have started having hallucinations or even permanent brain damage. The operation was a success and I've never had any serious complications, aside from the 4-inch section of my scalp where the hair won't grow. The doctors insisted my blacking out was unrelated and just a random panic attack. They insisted there wouldn't have been any symptoms at all. My brain was normal and there was no excess pressure anywhere yet. They said normally, you can't really tell until it's already causing problems. They said we were so, so very lucky. They all patted themselves on the back for going through with the CT scans, just in case. Skelly Sun never spoke to me again. He never moved. He never gave any indication he was anything more than a stuffed toy with a silly backstory. I still keep him around, though. He moved with me when I went to college, much to the confusion and amusement of my parents, who never got the full story from me. And he lives with me in my first home now. I'll introduce him to my kids as their guardian uncle, and he'll have a placement in their bedrooms when they sleep at night. Because even though it would be really easy for me to dismiss the encounters as hallucinations my doctors were wrong about, there was a reason that they took those scans. My dad wouldn't let it go and forced them to get scans. They argued with him to no end, but he wouldn't back down or explain why he was convinced they needed to be done. When my mom asked him afterwards how, how could he have known? How could he have seen what the doctors couldn't? When he was just some middle manager who had absolutely nothing in the way of medical knowledge. He swore her to secrecy. Mom and I drink wine together, though, and to this day has never mentioned it to her or anyone else again. He said, I know this might sound crazy, but as we were rushing out the door to the hospital, I heard someone shout, Make them check her brain from her bedroom.